Let's talk about extra trees a little bit. Previously with decision trees, we saw that we can have arbitrary low bias. When, our, when we are fitting our trees, we will partition our space into these smaller places. And as we keep adding more and more data, the error of our average model will also go down. And in the limit, this can go all the way to zero. For the variance, we saw that we can control the complexity of our model. But even if we do that, we can still overfit due to the optimization of our cut points. Let's have this nice plot from our last homework assignment. Here we see a bunch of trees with the depth going from 1 to 9. If we look closely here, we can see some strange narrow bands. For example, this red one, these blue ones, blue ones here, and blue ones here. These narrow bands occur because our, our single nodes can overfit. And this is called end cut preference. In these trees, our single nodes can see all the split conditions from all features, and they will just make that optimum selection at that point. And because of that, we can see these strange narrow bands. How can we prevent this? If we do not let those single nodes to see all the available options here, we can actually solve this problem. And we will have extra trees algorithm for that. Instead of trying all splits on all variables, we will just have this new parameter k. This will be the total number of splits that we will try. In this total number, we will select our features randomly, and we will also select our cut points randomly. And overall, we will only optimize over these k random splits. Let's have a notebook exercise here. In this exercise, we have two independent data sets, and we will first fit a single decision tree on this. So our decision trees look like this. As you see, we still have these narrow prediction surfaces. Let's have one extra tree with depth of 10 here. This time we see that our narrow predictions go away or we can say that they are reduced. And also we have overall more uniform shapes here compared to this. Let's go one more step and use 1000 extra trees. This time we have a smooth prediction surface. As you see, this thing is really smooth. And this one also. This is coming from the averaging effect. And we also see that our total variance is reduced. And you can also see here that we are not trying to catch these outlier points anymore. Let's talk about what we observe here. With this, we have improved our computational complexity because we are not checking all possible splits anymore. And when we are going from standard decision tree to a single extra tree, we had to increase our bias because our extra tree is simpler than our decision tree, even if we have the depth of 10 in the extra tree. And also the total variance had to increase because we inserted some extra randomness here. Also, our end cut preference is improved, so that's good. But overall, our error will be more with the extra tree here. What we can do, we can have multiple of these extra trees. This time the story changes. Then we average all those we have a vastly improved prediction surface. Let's discuss the bias variance trade-off. We have this nice figure from this paper. In this discussion, we will have an original algorithm, a randomized algorithm, and average algorithm. Here, let's assume the original algorithm is our decision tree. And let's assume we have this bias and variance. Let's apply randomization. This time, we turn this into a single extra tree. Here, the, the variance in the bias changes, as you see. The bias increased, and the total variance also increased. We had this variance due to the set fluctuation decreased, but we have this added variance due to the added randomness. When we go from this 
to the 1000 extra trees through averaging, what happens is that, as we have seen in the previous section, we can get rid of this term, so this becomes zero. And we are just left with this variance due to the data set fluctuation. And we also assume that we keep the same bias. And if that's the case, actually you can see that we reduced our total error. Because the total error is the sum of these. And as you see, we have less of that for the average algorithm. In your next assignment, you'll be able to experiment with this through our synthetic dataset.